Okay, I actually hit record this time. Datingwhileadulting.com. Say hi, Reggie. Hi, Reggie. <laughs> the Dating While Adulting podcast. I am Michael. That's Reggie, as he just said. And you know, Spill, go check us out at datingwhileadulting.com. See the latest tweets. See our, our Twitter at Adulting While. Um, see the YouTube videos. We're doing all of these on YouTube now. You can see them at datingwhileadulting.com. Go to the YouTube channel, which you can find a link there. All that good stuff. And of course, conventional way, go to where all you find your favorite podcasts and unfavorite podcasts, whatever you feel like. Okay, let's jump right into this. Um, first things first, I was watching a 30 for 30 a ESPN documentary, and it was on Oscar Pistorius. And for people that don't know, Oscar Pistorius was a South African sprinter who got both of his legs chopped off when he was a baby because of some kind of dis- some kind of thing, condition or whatever that he had. Um, he got prosthetic blades and learned how to run and became this world famous runner. Um, this was like, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, something like that. It seems like, seems like it's been that long, but shoot, the way things in my mind go, shoot, that must might've happened last year. Anyway, <laughs> but he was accused of, well, he wasn't accused, he admitted he shot his girlfriend and, and, and killed her and his um, contention was that he shot her because he woke up in the middle of the night, thought he heard somebody breaking into his crib. It was her rambling around, even though she spent the night with him. She was in the bathroom, so he shot her. Now, other people say that, and what he's currently in prison for is because he had a temper and they got into an argument. People could hear them screaming and stuff. And next thing you know, he shoots her um, in a domestic violence um, scenario. So the reason I bring this up is because, man, the point I wanted to make by bringing this up was that, man, confidence is something special. Because like I was telling Reggie before we started recording, um, which goes into a different story about why we didn't record because I forgot (laughs) to hit the record button, is that if I had two nubs for legs, I would not be as confident as he was. I was amazed at his confidence level because the woman that he shot, his girlfriend at the time, and other ex-girlfriends that he'd had were stunners. I mean, they were like top of the food chain. It's like Reggie, Reggie gets into all like the ratings, the eights, the nines. I don't do that stuff. I think it's kind of demeaning. But I will say they look good. And I would not think that those women would date do a dude with two stumps for legs. Now, maybe money's the equalizer, but still shout out to him confidence is something yeah okay what about um biggie you know it's funny there's a story that mc light told once and she took and this wasn't about biggie when i'm coming to biggie um she talked about how luke used to you know luke two live crew and all that stuff how everybody used to dog Mm -hmm. him say he was I had a gap in his tooth and all that stuff. He was demeaning the women, all that good stuff. And she said one t- time she walked past his hotel room and there was a line mm. of women waiting to do whatever he wanted to. And to your point about Biggie, Lil' Kim used to say the same thing. Between Lil' Kim and Faith, they both tell multiple stories about how they used to have to fight women on the regular to keep them off of Biggie. And, and this is before Biggie had Luke. Well, this was when he was like, I don't know if he was at his height. I mean, he had a record deal, but even if he didn't, and this is the difference between one of the difference between men and women, a woman is fine if she's fine. There's no question. Money won't make her more fine. Her confidence nope. might elevate her to a certain extent, but not from Biggie status to I want to hit that. That's like saying, like, <laughs> that's like saying, and no disrespect, which of course means disrespect. You know the comedian <laughs> Lunell? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can look her up if you don't, and y'all can look her up if you don't. It's like, there is nothing that she can do. And I'm speaking for myself. There's nothing she can do. Makeup, hair, money, nothing. Confidence that will make me want to hit hit that. I would think, I'm not a woman, obviously, but I would think there's nothing that Biggie could do. Money, confidence, whatever, that will make a woman want to hit that. But women will wind up to hit that. 
I disagree. Like I said, it's um going back to that confidence thing. Apparently, this there's this thing, this confidence thing that women have. And I've heard it a lot of times. A man with confidence, and you know, we have to define what that means. Um, there's what I call pseudo confidence and what I call real confidence. And you know, how to define real confidence. So no matter how you get it, is having a sense of self. You know, and you know, my mom's favorite motto, to thine own self be true, and you stay true to that. Going back to what you know, one of the podcasts about weaknesses and stuff like that. Um whether it's good it whether it's it can get to the point sometimes where it's disillusion. <laughs> you think you're actually bigger than where the narcissism and the arrogance comes in and stuff like that. But in my opinion, real confidence also embodies the fact that you are self-aware to know your insecurities and your vulnerabilities. But at the same time, you're confident enough to be able to navigate this thing called life with a sense of pride and value. <clears throat> uh, going back to the biggie and the particular Luke, because if you've seen Luke's wife, oh, stunning. And not only stunning, soon to be ex wife, well educated. Oh, it's they, they, they divorced now? Yeah, come on now. Everybody gets divorced. Come on. No, I just thought, I thought recently. Well, anyway, she was stunning. Stunning, oh. well educated, business is, stunning. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Don't get me yeah, wrong. So, yeah. Uh, you know, so. Um, but, but but even the, with the, the values that women and the value that men and women put on how what they are trying because I'm still really trying to nail down if you ask a hundred men what makes a woman attractive to sum it up the first thing they're going to always say is she look good now your attraction level and my attraction level are different but it's a physical aspect there's something there's a certain box that every yeah. guy that's true you ask a hundred women and you would get a hundred different answers and it's nowhere in the same freaking box. What makes you attracted to a man? And they talk about some esoteric thing about, oh, he makes me laugh. You just met the dude. How you gonna, you know, the dude walks up to you from across the room. He's not gonna make you laugh unless he's doing some of that uh, Jack Tripper stuff from Three's Company and tripping everywhere. And then you're gonna think it's a herb. So mm. what's gonna make you all of a sudden give him the time of the day to talk to you for five minutes? It's that confident. Well, I don't know that uh, women are that vague talking about somebody that they hadn't even met makes them laugh. I don't think that's fair. But I will say that <laughs> confidence seems to be a theme amongst women. Um, but it was funny to me about that is that whereas every man that you ask will say, if a woman is fine, she's fine. Why did you get with that woman? She's fine. Even if she's, she's fine. Even if she has not a ounce of sense in her head, she's fine. He's fine. Now, <laughs> what women, at least women that I know, seem to struggle a little bit more. But more women are coming around and being honest about it. But shoot, there are certain women who will say, I got with that dude because he got money. Or he looked like he had money. He had the appearance of that he had money. He he I saw his car or something like that. I actually uh I remember talking to a woman once and she was like, Yeah, um, this dude was trying to get at me. And I was not in the mood to talk to anybody. I looked over and saw his car. I was like, I got in the mood. So, <laughs> but whereas guys are pretty upfront about how superficial <laughs> that we are and the reasons that we, and we accept the fact that we're superficial about our stuff. Oh yeah. Women superficial don't seem, as hell. <laughs> yeah. Women don't seem to be as eager to admit their superficial ways it's like if you like money get that money but don't um get that money but don't but don't to reggie's point don't make it seem like he's got a good personality when nah if he were broke that personality wouldn't matter whereas if you that woman that we looking at worked at waffle house she'd still be fine michael michael had michael had a uh say it back in the day where you talk about if you driving along and you see this fine chick at the uh, metro, the model stage, the model bus stop in Atlanta, you're not going to mind <laughs> if she's at the model bus station. If she fine, you're going to pull up your bumper, as they say back in the day, and holler at her. Women, eh, like I said, be real with your stuff. Be real with your stuff. Yeah. You know, you want the money. Say you want the money. All the other stuff will come. All the other stuff may come on. Come, come with it. I remember back in the day where 
um, I knew about that part. So I used to dress down and I used to drive an old, well, not an old pickup truck, but I used to drive a pickup truck. And I wanted to see how many women actually gave me the time of day without knowing that I had a little change in my pocket. Okay. Okay. And well, cause you know, I, I want a woman to want me for me cause money, I, you can always make money. A man ambitious enough can always make money. Yeah. So here's, here's the difference with me, uh, with men and women. It's like, I'm going back to your thing about the bus stop. If a man sees a woman- I love at the that bus story. Stop, okay, she's still fine. It's like, she never she's stops fine. being fine. And you will never stop thinking of her in a certain way. If a yep. dude is at the bus stop, <laughs> that same dude could have a $3,000 suit on and you would see him totally differently than you would if he's wearing construction clothes at the bus stop. Yep. And, and now I will, and now being honest now, there you go, being perspective honest. now, if I meet that same woman at a business in a business suit, she'll still be fine. Um, and I might think about our future differently than if I saw her at the, at the bus stop. But I might not. I wouldn't disqualify her from being someone that I would date because she's at the bus stop. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so that's the difference. <clears throat> and a lot of women, at least that I know, uh, would disqualify that dude. And I hear women's talking about, no, I wouldn't. And I know one woman in particular who would date that dude at the bus stop. But even if... The, even for most women that I know, even if they would give that dude a shot at the bus stop, he would have to work a lot harder to break down her walls <laughs> than that guy um, in the $3,000 suit who's driving a Maserati or whatever nice car. Well, shoot, if the other dude's at the bus stop, any kind of car. Did you say Maserati? Y yeah. Did you say Maserati for I saw Maserati um, oh, okay. yesterday and it was weird because I don't see those in my neighborhood. So that's why I stuck out. What's wrong with Maserati? Hold, hold, hold up. You saw Maserati in your neighborhood. Look, dude, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Uh, I'm just talking, no, talking about the six kids. <laughs> Did you keep the, the well, window? <laughs> boy, let me just say, let me just say on the side. I've been in my house for 20 years. And uh, my neighbor moved out. I love my neighbor. She was cool. She never caused any trouble. She had one son. Everything was cool. She moved. And now, even as we're recording, there is someone that just moved into the house. And I promise I saw at least six kids ranging from like one year old to like 16. And it's like all of those mother blinking kids and whatever parent they got cannot be living in the house. But that's neither here nor there. Sorry. Get off truck. It just, it just bothers me. I don't reason it only reason I brought it up because in the one, this podcast and uh, the one before, you see Michael keep licking over his shoulder outside the window. Yeah, because they've been. Moving. So I just want to get clarification of that. He doesn't have a twitch. Because they've been moving for like five days, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, <laughs> but but the point I was making is that <laughs> it's easier to break down a woman's walls if you have the appearance of wealth as opposed to someone at the bus stop who would have to jump through more hoops whereas a guy hey she finds she's fine, she fine. Uh, you have a conversation with her hey <clears throat> if she come in with some something that makes some sense you're not going to hold that against her now to a certain extent you might depending on what she says what her can what her situation is why she's at the waffle house what led to that and things like that <laughs> but that's going way deeper we're talking about initially and just giving that yeah. person a legitimate shot which yeah and it's even it even broad it broads us out because of the simple fact that women you know find a suggest such is a very suggestive thing to guys what you find fine fine i will not find fine so her chances of actually you know any any broad takes a any, you know broad sloth a woman can be fine to certain men there's there's no wiggle room if you ain't got no money unless of course you just got a whole bunch of debt with credit cards and you're trying to portray that image yeah, and I think a lot of that, um, and I, we all, you and I always talk about it, and I know it sounds bad, but I think a lot of that is when a woman meets a dude 
they're thinking about what their friends would think. I think that if a woman meets a dude at the bus stop, when they, like, when I, when I tell you, Reggie, when I tell you about a woman that I met, um, where she works or whatever might come up, but it might not. And even if it does come up, it's not in a judgmental type way. It's just kind of like, hey, um, where is she from? Like those types of things. It's just questions. But if you're a woman and you met a dude and your friends ask you, well, where'd you meet him? Well, I was at the drive-in at Zaxby's and he was at the bus stop and he came to our window and hollered at me. Your, your homegirls, they gonna start, they gonna, they might not clown you. And that's the thing. If they would clown no, you, hold face, that would be one thing. But what they'll do is they'll talk shit about you behind your back and just give you a look to your face. Like, girl, I don't know. It's like already crap wow. on the dude, <clears throat> which will creep into your head and affect your confidence when you um, actually like the dude enough to give him your number. Eh. No, no, no. Well, 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 this is the one time where we're going to reverse roles and Reggie oh. had to defend the women. Oh, Maybe Reggie. Oh, man. You know, I was butthurt. I was butthurt when one of those episodes was now. You don't make me get back on their side. Yeah, well. Men do the same thing. Men do the exact same thing, except it's different because it's, it's instant. It's instantaneous. We want when we bring that's that whole fine thing. We want our boys to think our woman is fine. Now, granted, to an extent now, but you now, come on. We, you're not going, you know, there's this thing about the, the joke with the fat chick or the ugly chick that you really like, but you ain't trying to bring around your friends. And every time, you know, you go, you smash and stuff like that, but she's going out the back door so your friends don't see her. Well, that, okay. I'm thinking about two different things. That's, that's, it's like, it's that's like, the same thing. That's, no, no. It's like one back in the day, if you're like having sex with somebody and you don't want them to know that you like sleeping with this chick. I'm talking about somebody that you're like, actually like, like thinking of dating, like somebody that you meet with good intentions. No, like, it's the same thing. Some guys, some guys, you know, they have the back in mind that, okay, I may like her, but it, you know, but you know, she's not necessarily my standard and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, some guys go through that. Some guys do that. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll particularly, yeah. if they, particularly like, you know, if they, well, you know, I like her, I really like her and stuff like that. And she goes and he introduced his woman mm -hmm. to his boys, his homeboys, and they clown her. And, you know, unlike, unlike women, we clown you in your face. <laughs> we clown you in your face. Dude, we, it's going to take a real strong man to sit there and say, well, forget y'all. This is my woman. She got my back and she's my, she's my bunny See, without dropping. Yeah, I guess, I guess, like, you you I, know. yeah, I guess you and I can disagree on that one because at, when we were younger, that was a thing. But now as we're older, like I know plenty of friends of mine who have wives that I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. And I'm not talking about you, whoever you <laughs> is that's listening. Um, I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot bowl, but you talking about my mama. <laughs> or even if um even even um dudes that bring around women that they're dating and stuff like that, it's like I'm like, okay, that's not my speed, but it's like, hey, whatever. But I really at, at 50 years old, like dudes are clowning dudes for bringing Dude, around something no, oh, that they that they oh, actually oh, like. Hold up, hold up. Hold up, I'm not in the dating world, so I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's what I'm dating. saying. But no, not you, but I'm talking about if somebody brought their woman around you, you would clown them if, if they weren't attractive. This goes back to you and that college stuff when y'all poaching all that stuff. Like, yeah, look at, you no, no, like I said, listen, no, no, like I said, you know, we, we're in our 50s now, and most of the guys I know are... Uh, married, married, or actually, no, bringing Cabrera, but Cabrera used to have some dime pieces, so I, I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt I do it to say anything about a clown, but at the same time, it's like I don't know because I'm not in that that arena anymore where I have to sit there and, and quote unquote, for lack of a better word, judge my boy's girl and single and stuff. So, it, it, you know, once you get past your thirties, it becomes a whole different arena. And unfortunately, I haven't been in the dating game for a while. So, you know, yeah. I'm not going to sit there and judge my boy's wife if I don't find her attractive. He's just, oh, okay. Yeah, but. That's what you like. 
but with that said, I, I still know women that do that to this day, where it's like if they're if their home girl brings somebody around and he's not up to quote unquote standard, whatever that standard is, it's a thing. Whereas I find that men are more accepting of the women that um, are brought around their men. I mean, brought around. Yeah. their male friends and stuff like that. I can and, see that. I think I can see that. Yeah. Now with that said, that leads to another point that Reggie um, kind of put me on to that we wanted to talk about for the rest of the time that we have today and it goes along with the whole theme of having confidence and stuff like that Reggie turned me on to this dude his name is Kevin Samuels and we'll put the link in the show notes so you can watch this video because Reggie as you can tell watches a lot of YouTube and (laughs) basically um, I forget the name of the piece but it's I think it's something like you're just average and I don't know who Kevin Samuels is you're just average at best yeah, you just yeah, average, average at best. I don't know who Kevin Samuels is. I'd never heard of him before Reggie put me on to him, but I do know that this video has 300,000 views and I wouldn't mind having those numbers. But <laughs> but it, it was interesting because when we were having a conversation about com- um, confidence before we actually started recording, one of the things that Reggie brought up that was interesting was that you kind of have to know where you are confidence wise well i mean your confidence your confidence has to be high but you also have to be realistic as to what to expect yes from others regardless of how confident you are like i can be the most confident person in the world realistically in my state right now i i can't get beyonce unless they were like (laughs) A lot of unforeseen factors like a meteor has hit the earth. We get stranded on a deserted island, something like where it's just she and I, things like that. Because and she's not married. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's single or whatever. Even, even a single Beyonce, uh, my, my chances are um, limited considering she's half a billion dollars and I'm in my house, which is a nice house. But if I'm riffing about the six kids next door... <laughs> <laughs> when you look at the list of Beyonce's options, realistically, and, and for all y'all, for all y'all dudes out there listening to this saying, well, shoot, I, I stepped to her. Okay, cool. I applaud you for stepping to her. That don't mean that you'll get the time of day. My whole thing True. is dudes that I talk to are so proud of, of, of striking out that it's like, like you, like you need a, like you deserve a medal for striking out. Nah, dude, if you swing and miss, you just swung and miss. I ain't giving you credit for swinging. So See, I disagree with you. I disagree with you wholeheartedly that I, I, I used to know a lot of guys who wouldn't even take the bat off their shoulders. Yeah, but if the result so, is the same, does it matter? It's, it's not about the results sometimes. It's, you know, as I'm on this journey of Zen, it's about the process. It's not about the results. And, yeah. you know, it's, you know, using the baseball reference, there's a lot of times these guys, you know, going back in the day, like 15, 20 years ago, when um, I had a whole bunch of single friends and all that jazz. And it's clear, you know, men need to understand that the odds are always against us when it comes to men and women. Women always would get more opportunities to find their mate than we will, um, even as they get older. Um, so you particularly when you get younger, when you're younger, you need to have as many swings and misses as possible. So when you do find the one that you really want to, you know, be with, you're not fumbling like burning, burning fight, trying to get your one bullet out your holster, your gun, but your, your bullet put in the holster to fire that one shot. So if you already had a confidence of, you know, going to the target practice and shooting and blah, blah, blah. When you get that target, you're going to more likely hit whether or not, you, you know, that's the one time that sometimes you may actually be able to, like you always say, out punch your coverage. Cause then that confidence level comes in where you're aware that, you know, my loss of hitting this fastball on the outside plate, cause I'm not a fastball outside plate hitter. But since I've been practicing and been drinking my milk, I can recognize it's a fastball on the outside plate in the split second and move inside and scoop. And might be able to make contact. So, you know, you you know, you you have to take those chances well, sometimes, but you have to practice. Well, yeah, and it's true that p- practice makes perfect. I don't disagree with that. And the more times you get told no, you kind of build up a little bit of an immunity. 
But with that said, to me, I think the, the, the purpose is defeated if you are practicing on like unrealistic targets. And that goes back to the video that you sent me with this Kevin Samuels dude. Basically, long story short, this woman calls into his show. He has a show and he gives advice to women. And this woman says, I make six figures and I date beneath me. And I want you to tell me how I can get a man on my level. And this dude, and again, we'll put the link in the show notes and we'll tweet it. Um, just to give him um, his whatever, his due. And he took offense to it. And I, Reggie took offense to it too. That's why he sent it to me. And after <laughs> I watched it, I, I can see what they took offense to. And to give you some of the highlights, he was asking her questions like, okay, um, for example, okay, what type of men do you want? What, you dating men beneath you, what's on your level? And the first thing that she went to, and the only thing she actually went to was the money that she made. She wanted a man that was six figures. Okay, so they determined that that narrowed her options to the top 10%. And if you're talking about black men, actually it's less than that. I'm about to say it's really yeah. less than that. Yeah, yeah. But. And so that so he was like, okay, so if you're in the top whatever to 10% of all the people in that state that you're looking for, that's prime real estate. What makes you what makes you think that they would want you? And she really didn't have a good answer. Then he started breaking her down even further, found out that she's got like a kid, a teenage boy. Oh, wait, her age first. Oh, her, she's 35. She had a son when she was 16. Um, the father is is in and out sketchy. of the pages, sketchy and all that stuff. Um, and one thing that was actually, this was funny to me that Reggie brought up and I saw in a video, he asked her on a scale of one to 10. And again, I don't believe in the ratings, what he thought, what she thought of herself. And she said, before she put on makeup in the morning, a five, after she put on the makeup, a six. And so he was like, look, there are no dudes out here that's making six figures that will want you. <laughs> and so he was like, you don't look the part. Don't nobody want nobody with no kid, where the father is in and out and all that baby daddy drama and all that stuff. And he just broke her down. And there was a response video where with two women who had him on their show. And one of the women was actually on his side. The other women thought, called him an asshole and asked him if he apologized <laughs> and stuff like that. And he was like, shit, she called me. It's like, she called my show asking for advice. I gave her advice. You know what to expect when you call me, which is the point. And that goes back to the confidence and the, and the realism. Realistically, and I don't want to knock this woman's hustle. If you just look at her, if you have options, I would venture to say that she probably wouldn't be the top option, especially if you making six figures and you can drive the Maserati and you can pull up on the woman who's having a bad day and she'll look at your car and be like, okay, I'll talk to you now. So like she, it goes back to what we, how we value, how men and women value each other. And he was bringing that up. He was like, okay, in your mind, you may think you're this and this and you bring this, this in the table, but you're not dating yourself. What are you, what do you think these men value? And she cannot, she doesn't know. She's talking about planting cucumbers in the backyard. A six-figure man, <laughs> yeah. first of all, the first thing he's going to sit there and look at is, is she fine? Is she yeah. fine? Yeah. And she wasn't fine. He, he asked her what she, what she would bring to that six-figure man's life. And she said she can help him with his business. If he's making six figures, he probably doesn't need help with his business. He's doing all right. No, and then she, more and, then, and then to Reggie's point, she said, I, I like planting things, planting, like planting, like seeds that grow into plants. The earth. Like, what <laughs> the in earth. the hell does that have to do with anything? I'm it, a six figure man and I want a farmer. <laughs> yeah, to grow my crops and stuff. So none, my of it, crops. none of it made sense. And I think to, to Reggie's point and this dude's point, and it's like, you know, when Reggie goes off on his soapbox against women, it's like, I try to be the devil's advocate. But in this case, 
like when I gave the thing, when I said being realistic and I mentioned Beyonce, I mentioned that and talked about my, ch my chances are limited. It was based on what I would perceive her desires to be in a man. And since we discussed that money is big to women and she has half a billion dollars that she's worth. Half a billion, half a billion. So looking at her and not just saying, I'm a good dude, so she should want to be, <laughs> I'm a good dude and I know how to plant flowers. No, I'm a, <laughs> this is what she wants. I don't more have, likely, any, I don't have number one on the list. And more than likely, I mean, she may be that odd, like odd artist where, you know, she wants personality and spiritual growth and stuff like that. But dude, you're going to rest, you're going to rest your relationship happiness on, on that 1%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and so to Reggie's point, Kevin's point and about this woman, and I don't want to say all women, obviously, but there are a lot of women out there that say, I'm this, so I expect this person, and I don't want to get into above and below, but if she said that she dates dudes beneath her, she's looking at dudes that would see her as beneath them. But mm -hmm. she's saying that she's on their level mm -hmm. when according to what they would be looking for, not what she thinks, she's not. But there's that, un, there's that unrealistic attitude that she has, and many women have. Um, Illusion. Yeah, yeah. That it would be like, okay, well, you know, shoot, because I can plant stuff and I can help him with his business, which, what does that even mean? It's like, it's like, yeah, then I, I deserve that. And I'll tell the story real quick. I told it before. Um, I, I have a really good friend. We were sitting watching, um, she's a big woman, and we were sitting watching one of those match game shows where it's like there was a, a woman who was interviewing three men behind the curtain asking them questions and she was gonna pick one sight unseen. And so two of the dudes that she was choosing from were big. One was um, a dude that looked like he worked out. So from asking the questions and stuff, she wound up choosing one of the big dudes. <clears throat> and the friend of mine who was sitting next to me who's big she was like oh man she picked a fat dude and so i'm looking at her and i'm not gonna be like well shit you're fat but <laughs> so instead i was like well yo she's big so what's the big deal and she was like michael just because we're big we don't want a big dude and so i'm just like where's the logic in that <laughs> and so and I don't know if that's, I, I don't know if that's, is that confidence? Is that, if you think you deserve something that you really don't deserve, is that confidence? That's, no, that's, that's arrogance. That's arrogance and entitlement. And that's a whole different oh. story. That's a whole, that's, 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 that's entitlement. And that's a whole different podcast. And there's a lot of entitled women who think they deserve things that they don't. Now granted, don't get me wrong. There's, there are a lot of entitled people in the world. There are a lot of tidy people in the world. So I'm not going to sit there and just say all women. Yeah. But since this is a show about dating and, you know, so, and like I said, I always say, at least once a podcast, once to, I don't date men. Well, I don't date anyone really, but you know what I'm saying? But yeah, there's a lot of entitled women. And entitled people believe they deserve things that have not been earned. Well, here's one thing that's <laughs> interesting to me is that um, um, when, like, even though I talk about Beyonce and I use her as the example, and, and I know a lot of guys who, if they saw Beyonce um, anywhere and they had like two minutes with her, they would, they would shoot their shot, married or whatever. But <laughs> it's almost like with a wink, it's almost like they hit on women for sport. So it's not really expecting a yes. And if they get turned down to what we were talking about earlier, they take pride in the fact that they shot their shot. Oh. And oh, okay, okay, I'm, okay. You you clarify now. I so I have to backtrack and retrack and apologize. Okay, that yeah, yeah that doesn't no. Okay, yeah. I was I was thinking I was thinking something else. I was thinking something else. Okay, yeah, but it seems like um. So it's like that guy that does it for sport. You be I would tell that guy, dude. You know that chick is out of your league, and he'd be like laughing, like yeah, but you know I shot my shot. This woman that was on this YouTube video or whatever, and some women that um, I, I know, she really thinks that she deserves that dude. <laughs> and her, 
only basis is if they make the same money, everything else is even. And, and if you put yourself out there, you put yourself out there to be criticized and that's what she did. And for people that watch this video, just listening to this woman talk, I would think it's the woman that I would think that I would meet at South DeKalb Mall for what people for people that don't live in Atlanta <laughs> and don't know what South DeKalb Mall is. It's like a bootleg mall where you can go buy fake Gucci purses and stuff like that. <laughs> it's like with her lace front and it's like her bad lace front at that. It it it's just yeah, but you couldn't tell her that she didn't deserve that. Did she, did she not that, you know, um, I'm just asking questions. Um, did she have a college education? Um, no. Okay. Because the other part of this is taking the, um, you know, commend her for building her business up to get six figures, you know, no, no, that's, that's some good shit. But at the same time, a lot of the guys, particularly black guys who are these six figure guys more than likely are going to have degrees also to back that up, you know? So with that being said, uh, she needs to be a little bit more realistic on being so choosy, you know? Um, Self-esteem and stuff comes in the fact, whether you have money or not, self-esteem comes in the fact that what you think you can pull and you can hold and stuff like that. I've seen it in too many, too many episodes up here, but at the same time with that money, with the average guy, um, Actually, I'm going to sidetrack. I give you a perfect example. And I used to get on, I used to tell Mike about this all the time. You can tell the confidence of what a man is by the type of women he actually allows himself to be seen with. And uh, Tiger Woods, before Tiger Woods got with um, uh, the skier. Lindsey Vaughn? Yes. Was not necessarily, I would think, not necessarily the most confident men around women, because if you're going to get in a scandal <laughs> with a Waffle House chick, <laughs> uh, did, 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 you see, did you see the Waffle House chick, though? Yes, I did. She oh. wasn't cute. Well, yeah. She wasn't cute. Well, she was <laughs> huh? She was available, I guess. Dude, you talking about Beyonce at the time? Tiger Woods was a half a billion dollar man, so uh, I don't need to be done. <laughs> you can get you a high class call girl. <laughs> I'm just saying, dude, you ain't messing with no Waffle House shit. <laughs> let me just say on a side note. Let me just say on a side note. Poor Tiger. You you can tell that Tiger wasn't um he was new to the game. He wasn't experienced to the game because his whole thing got busted. Because Tiger Woods, the half billion dollar man, this chick said, I need I need books for school or I need tuition or something like that. And he was like, I don't do that. It's like, as opposed to giving her like a thousand dollars just to shut up. Yeah, to shut her up. Yeah, yeah. He it, just he stood on principle. And the principal nope, led and, him golf clubs in his back window, but hey. And you know, in no disrespect to his uh former wife, but you. She was a well. She a, she was a nanny, right? Yeah, she, she was, was a nanny. But she was fine. Though. This she goes back to what we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. She was fine. Therefore, she could command the respect of a seven figure man, <laughs> a damn near eight figure man, because she was what fine. She she was what that seven. <laughs> Actually, I think she still man, is. Yeah, she is. But she was and Cause, is cause, what that seven figure man is looking for. And again, it goes back to. You can't just look at yourself and say, I deem myself worthy of that person. You need to like ask yourself, what does that person want? And then how can I tailor my life to be what he wants? Get your butt in the gym. It's funny how many conversations <laughs> I've had. No, no, there's business. It's amazing how many conversations I've had with women and they're like, I can't find a man. I can't find a man and all of this stuff. It's like, what can I do to find a man? And I was like, okay. Go work out. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if you lose 30 pounds, you will get more action than you're getting today. And they think I'm tripping. They think I'm like being funny and stuff like that. But again, what men want, what will attract a man to you? Not just being 328 pounds and saying, well, I got my toes done. No, it's like- Actually, actually I have a question for you on that one. Yeah, what's up? We're getting the toes done? 
No, 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 no. Because uh, one of the things when I was younger, one of the things when I was younger, as I try to get the light because it's getting dark now in DC, um, was those cute fat chicks back in the day. And she get with a guy who actually likes her because you know he thinks he's cute, she's cute, and that's 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 his speed. And he finds her the greatest thing since sliced bread. And then she goes and loses a lot of weight. Now, great, like I said, she's still cute. She's cute as a bitch, but she's cute. And all of a sudden, she started to get more action now because she's slim. Yep. And she dumps the dude that was loyal to her. Yep. How do you feel about those situations? I, it's kind of hard to say. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to say because, you know, like I always say, a lot of us are only as faithful as our options. I heard Charlemagne say that, giving them credit. And what it comes down to is, yeah, if you get more options, it open your, opens your eyes to things. And I've seen that go both ways. I've seen dudes make money and all of a sudden chick get a new car and chicks are on them. And then it's like, well, shoot, you stuck with me, but forget you. And I hear, I hear a lot of women talk about, <laughs> I stayed with him when he had nothing. He got something left me. Russell Wilt, the Russell Wilsons of the world and the um wow one other person that I cannot remember who dumped his wife girlfriend after he got a contract but but so yeah it's like you know you need to know the person know your personnel know the person that you're dating and hey I, I see that's the real, that's the one reason why I uh, appreciate the Denzel Washingtons and the Idra Elvas in the world and stuff like that because Especially those, especially those two, because you know they're the cats meow right now. Well, maybe not right now because of COVID and stuff. But uh, at one point in their life, they were the cat meow and stuff like that. And you know, to buck that, you're only as faithful as your options. As far as I know, they never had scandals with other women. Because trust me, they had a lot of options. I can imagine they had a lot of options. Well, actually, Denzel did. Hmm? He admitted he cheated. So. Oh. Okay, yeah. well, scratch that then. Yeah. There goes that argument. Yeah, not Idris. <laughs> I hadn't heard anything about Idris, but he just got married. But um, yeah, Denzel copped to his. But he, but but I, he was one. He got married before he was Denzel, though. So yeah, he was. That's yeah. the other part. That's what I'm saying. She yeah. broke. He just didn't leave. Yeah. He just did his dirt and stayed with her. So yeah, but at the same, I mean, you know, that's a whole different cheating is a whole different conversation that we're gonna get into. Yeah. But but, uh, but still, at the same time. Uh -huh. he, I mean, but at the same time, he, even with his cheating, not that I'm not that I can not that I'm condoning cheating, but at the same time, Denzel, I mean, I'm not saying his wife is ugly by no shit stretch of the imagination, but oh boy. Denzel Denzel. No, 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 Denzel Denzel. And there were better options, look better looking options out there for him to have. Of course, they were because well, we don't know what the chick he cheated will look like, but for him to still stay there, I still find commendable. I'm not applauding the fact that he cheated on his wife, but at the same time, he could have been like, oh, well, oh, oh, Kevin Hart. He'd be like Kevin Hart. <laughs> He'd be like Kevin Hart. One of the rumors was with Paula Patton. So if that puts it in perspective. Um, as for Kevin Hart. Uh, yeah, he got, <laughs> oh, hold up. Uh, that, that. And yeah. he stayed, yeah. <laughs> he went, and he went back. Well, that's, the whole thing. Must, but, that's, that's the whole thing like, shoot if you see somebody that's attractive and you want to stick your dick into them that doesn't mean that you in love with them you just want to see what that's like exactly with men we don't yeah men we yeah we don't discriminate like that yeah, yeah, Paul yeah, Pat, I, I yeah. Too. yeah kevin hart didn't want to leave his wife he just got caught with some caught up with somebody who had a video camera but yeah but and plus his, plus his wife was pregnant so shoot i don't know what Anyway, oh no no no! I'm talking about the, no, no, I'm talking about the first one. No no, I'm talking about the first time. Oh, the first wife. Oh, yeah, because the the one the chick that he married now is the mistress. <laughs> right 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 right. And you but and you talking about a woman? What do you think about a woman losing weight and leaving her dude for another the, dude? The, all these that's what, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. We, got, we got 45 seconds left, so <laughs> so. The point I'll make in the last 40 seconds is confidence is a mug. If you got confidence, you win it. Um, and you win it. But be and realistic. Then it goes to both sides. Be realistic with your stuff. Don't be shooting your shot yeah. of thinking you're good enough to get somebody that's out of your league. And not to say out of the that you can't get in their league, but you might need to put in some work, do some sit ups, or get some money if you're a male or yep, a female. Yep, exactly. Yeah, because yeah, I want that Paula Patton, but I ain't getting that kind of money. 
<laughs> about it. Goodness gracious. All right. Thank you Ooh. all for stopping by datingwhileadulting.com. Please visit us. And yeah, I'm so I'm just happy that I actually got I actually recorded it. Say goodbye, Reggie. Yeah, she recorded it after two times. Yeah. Damn it, man. Bye, Reggie. <laughs> bye bye, boy.